Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Skill Builder Series, our BBB Skill Builder Series, Advertising 101. My name is Jared Wise, I'm Vice President of Marketing with Better Business Bureau. We have with us Rebecca Harpster and Pearl Yon with our marketing communications team. We put this fabulous presentation together today. So again, thank you for joining us. They have some great information to go over today. Um, before we start, real quick, um, we're going to be uh, taking questions, so make sure to ask them at the end of this presentation. Um, and then if you have questions as you go along, feel free to put it in the lower right corner. Just type in your questions and we'll answer them at the end. Um, this is also going to be a very interactive um, presentation. We don't want to make these boring because I know you guys have a lot to do and watching a PowerPoint can be kind of daunting sometimes, but we actually have a quiz built for you all and also uh, some videos to look at at the end too so it can educate you a little more about advertising and what we do and uh, our history and you know overall how to watch out for misleading advertising so I'm gonna let Pearl hello Pearl hello Rebecca yeah and I'll let you two take it over great okay well hello everybody this is Rebecca uh, thank you for joining us today um, so today we're talking about advertising 101. So we're going to be talking about what some common advertising pitfalls are. Um, we'll go over BB's history for, of advertising and our role in addressing advertising, substandard marketplace behavior. Um, and we're going to show you some examples of some advertising to look out for. So there's our outline. We're going to start with some BB history, talk about the process of an advertising review. We're going to talk about how we help you all, we help businesses to create transparent and truthful advertising. And we're going to show you some examples of bad ads uh, that you should steer clear of when you're advertising your products and services. All right, so we're going to start off with a little bit of BBB's history. So BBB was actually formed in 1912 from the National um, Vigilance Committee, which was later changed to what we know it now as the Better Business Bureau. Principles were incorporated by Samuel Dobbs of Coca-Cola, which were based on the Ten Commandments of Advertising. Then in 1914, the consultations between advertisers and Better Business Bureau agreed that accurate advertising claims began and continued throughout BBB's history. Today, BBB seeks to encourage truthful advertising and help correct misleading ones. And we base all of our information on FDC's Code of Advertising. Our BBB accredited businesses must uphold all 38 codes in the Code of Advertising, and we use those as standards to protect the public from misleading advertisements. So the ad review process. The, it starts with the public will notify BBB of advertising issues when filing a complaint against a business. When our complaints department is notified of a complaint that contains an advertising issue, they will transfer it to our trade practice department. And the other way BBB becomes aware of advertising issues is when we see that a company wants to become a BBB accredited business or when we complete our yearly review of, of our accredited businesses, we notice a business is in violation of one of our code of advertisements and we initiate a process to try to get the company to substantiate, modify, or discontinue the advertisement. And then how does BBB help businesses? So first, we help review the advertising copy free of charge before publication. We also will mail a code of advertisement brochure if the company is interested. And we will answer advertising questions or refer them to the source that can help. Great, so now we're going to look at the three most common advertising pitfalls that your business should be avoiding. So as Pearl mentioned, our trade practice department is doing ad reviews all the time. So whether a consumer submits an ad they think is misleading, or we see an ad uh, from a business that we think is not quite right, we will review that ad. So here are the, um, some of the most common ones that our trade practices department told us they see the most often. So the first one is satisfaction guaranteed. And each one of these specifically uh, relates and corresponds to a line from our code of advertising. So uh, number 20 in the code of advertising is about warranties or guarantees. So it says when you use the term warranty or guarantee, you should clearly and conspicuously include a statement that the complete details of the warranty can be seen prior to the sale. And that can include just putting it on your website. So advertisers should disclose any material limitations on a satisfaction guarantee or money back guarantee. 
and they, you need to define the meaning of claims like lifetime guarantee. So in that case, you know, what is a lifetime? Is it actually how long the person is alive? Is it a certain number of years? You just need to make sure you are giving a lot of details so that the consumer isn't confused. So just to reiterate that, all the details and guarantees must be clearly and conspicuously disclosed. Mm -hmm. So it's okay if that's on your website. You know, you don't need to, you know, to tell every consumer that calls every single detail of that, but it does need to be somewhere where it can be easily found. And you really should only be using a satisfaction guarantee, a money back guarantee, if you actually are planning on refunding the full purchasing price of the advertised product. If you aren't, then that's misleading. When a consumer sees that 100% uh, satisfaction guarantee, um, what that means to them is that if they aren't satisfied, they can get their money back. So you really want to make sure you know you're being honest and you're being transparent. And, you know those are two of our standards for trust, and that's really something that you should always be striving for. So next we're going to look at an example of one of these. So as you can see here, satisfaction guarantee 100%. Um, if you see this, if this is on your website, you really want to make sure the guarantee policy is also on the website. And as you can see here, there's no guarantee policy uh, anywhere. There's no details about about the policy. And um, those details should include any limitations or conditions that apply. So let's say the consumer has 30 days to um, let you know let, uh, that they're not satisfied. That needs to be included. Uh, any details about how the consumer has, uh, can get the refund. So whether they need a receipt or whether they need some other proof of purchase uh, and any, anything like that. All those details really need to be included to make sure the consumer knows what's going on. Next, we have lowest price guarantee. So as you can see, uh, anytime there's a guarantee, that can possibly be an issue. So lowest price guarantee corresponds to number 12, uh, section number 12 in our code of advertising. And that states that advertisers should avoid making unqualified lowest price claims. One appropriate qualification is to promise truthfully that the advertiser will meet or beat a lower price sold by others. So that's kind of a little bit of a confusing line, I think, you know, what does unqualified lowest price claim mean? So all that means is that it probably is not smart for you to just say lowest price guaranteed because prices are always changing. The marketplace is always changing. You can't guarantee that your price is always going to be the lowest unless you're checking, you know, every second of every day, which is just unreasonable. So if you do say something like that, lowest price guaranteed, you really need to make sure that you have substantiation in the form of we will meet or beat a uh, lower price sold by others. So um, if you do say that you will match or beat competitors' prices, you can say that, but you have to make sure you're saying it in good faith. So you aren't going to make it really difficult for the consumer to get that. You aren't going to make them jump through hoops. You aren't going to be difficult to deal with. Um, it has to be an easy process for the consumer. And it cannot be, like I said, unrealistic or unreasonable for the consumer. So if the consumer has to do all this crazy stuff uh, for you to meet the price, that's not okay. Um, and of course, it needs to include uh, what evidence the consumer has to present to take advantage of the offer, what conditions apply, and what items or services do the guarantee apply to. So the common theme is you just want to have those details. You don't want to leave anything up to the imagination. You don't want to leave room for confusion. So the more details you can include, the better. And this has to be clearly and conspicuously disclosed again. Having trouble with the word conspicuous today. <laughs> <laughs> so here is an example of one of these. So there are a few things we can talk about with this example. So we'll go from top to bottom. So you see that asterisk next to the $40 off. Asterisks are always tricky too. And of course, there's something in the code of advertising about that. So line number 22 says that asterisks can be used to provide additional information, but they shouldn't be used to contradict or change the meaning of the original claim. So uh, one example of this that we see a lot is with free trials, free trial scams or, you know, misleading free trials. So it'll say free trial asterisk and the asterisk will say, except that, you know, you have to pay $100 for shipping and handling and you're going to enroll in this thing and it's going to cost you a lot of money later on. So that's kind of contradicting. That's saying the trial isn't really free. So that sort of asterisk isn't used, isn't, isn't okay. But if you're using it just to provide a little more detail and clarify things, then it can be okay. So you just want to make sure you're being careful that you aren't promising one thing and then negating it in the asterisk. You want to make sure you're being consistent. 
Uh, and then moving down to regular posted price. There's an issue with this he uh, as well. So line number two of the code of advertising states that when you are going to compare prices to your current selling price, it's really important to make sure that consumers have all the necessary information to make an informed purchase. So what's missing here is that it says regular posted price. If it's so regular, you know, it should be posted. So whether that is $100, $150, whatever that regular posted price there, it should state it. Um, if it's regular, it's probably not changing. So let's say a consumer is seeing this particular advertisement online or, you know, newspaper, they aren't going to know right then how much it is. The regular posted price, they aren't going to be able to tell how much uh, after the $40 off it's going to be. So it's really important to include those details. And then moving on, we already discussed the lowest price guaranteed. So there should be uh, something there as well saying that if you find a lower price, they'll meet or beat it and how you can do that. And then at the bottom, there's fastest smog checks. Now that's actually a problem too. And the reason why is that there's no substantiation. You know, is there an independent study done? You know, how fast are yours compared to others? There needs to be some sort of details or evidence. You want to be able to back up your claims. Because uh, you really do want to make sure you're being truthful, and that's what's most important. And having substantiation, having evidence is the best way for consumers to verify you are telling the truth. Next, we're going to go into emergency or distress sales. So these sales are including but not limited to bankruptcy, liquidation, going out of business sales, but they can also include emergency circumstance situations. Um, and there is, of course, something in the code of advertising about this. Line number 10, um, there's a few parts. So going out of business, when the advertiser states that it's going out of business or closing down, it must actually be happening. So mostly just, you know, as always, tell the truth. You don't want to be lying that you're going out of business in order to get people into your store or give a reason for a sale. If you aren't actually going out of business, you can advertise that you're selling out of a product or closing out a particular merchandise. But again, as long as you actually will no longer be carrying that. So if you still, you can't say selling out of a product and then once the sale is over, you can still be selling it. That's just not being truthful. Um, liquidation sales. A liquidation sale means that the advertiser's entire business is in the process of actually being liquidated prior to actual closing. So if that's not true for you, you shouldn't be advertising that you're going, uh, doing a liquidation sale. And then we get into emergency or distress sales. So an emergency sale must be for a limited period of time, and it should only include products that are affected by the emergency. The reason given for the sale must be true. So of course, you know, must be true. That's, you know, tell the truth is one of our uh, main tenets of BB's standards for trust, and that's always, always important. If you're stating that you're closing out on a particular product, um, you have to make sure you actually are no longer carrying that product once the sale is over. So again, tell the truth. Um, and your sale should always include um, the closing date or the date that you're going to stop selling the product. And that should be clearly disclosed on any advertisement. So again, it must be, the sale must be limited to a period of time and it must state the closing or end dates. Uh, the stated or implied reason must be factual. You must actually be going out of business or liquidating your business. And the sale should not exceed 90 days. So you can't have, you know, a year long sale. Um, before you go out of business. That's, that's misleading in itself. And an example of this, here we have a nice going out of business after 89 years, 55 to 80% off retail. That's all great, but there's no date here about when the business is closing and when the sale is ending. And that's really important to have to make sure that you aren't misleading any consumers. Good, good information. So next we're gonna be showing you our website called Add Truth. And we're going to be showing you two videos and also be taking a fun interactive quiz. So if you scroll down on the page, there's a video section you can click on. And hopefully you can hear. <laughs> Let's see if I can make that a little bigger. Yeah. Or just click on the top. Mm -hmm. So this year, I ordered my prom dress from Shane Deal. And when it came, it said, some assembly required. I ordered these batteries for my digital camera, but the batteries weren't included, so I had to draw all of our family memories. I ordered a 60 inch TV from Shady Deals. What they actually meant is you can't sit further than 60 inches away. I said suck with a baby baby. Be a savvy consumer, research businesses, report false advertising, and settle transaction claims with the BBB. Perfect. Good. All right, so 
now make sure another video doesn't play. Um, <laughs> oh, there's another one. Yeah, there's a list of them. They're all really good, though. Well, they're five different scams and unfaced products. Like bulky skateboard tools or bad sky rays. Sometimes they think they're getting this, but it's more like this. Or this. Good. Good stuff. Perfect. So now we're going to take a quiz, and it's going to really test if you can spot false advertisement. Awesome. Okay, here we go. So we're going to try this. We're going to try yeah. this out. We're going to so, try this all together. And we put together a uh, UPI sauce typing if you're on early, like putting together a quick little questionnaire to see if you guys can answer the right questions that are online right now. So we're going to make this interactive right now. So as you're watching, try to figure out the answers to these questions as we go through our quiz here. So Pearl, yeah. go ahead. What's this one? So number one is your coffee cup says eco-friendly. Under what circumstance might this not be misleading? So we have four options. So A is the company won an award for being environmentally conscious. B, the company promised to heat all shops using renewable energy by 2020. C, the cup says in large print, cup made with 3% post-consumer recycled fiber. And D, none of the above. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to launch a poll right now. So think about your answer. Get the, get the letter in your head right now. So I'm launching a poll right now. And remember, this is what circumstances it wouldn't be misleading. Yes. Yeah, so again, if you can put in that number, it should be on your what you think it is. Again, A is the company won an award for being environmentally conscious. B is the company promised to heat all shops using renewable energy by 2020. C, the cup says in large print, cup made with 3% post-consumer recycled fiber. And D is none of the above. So we'll leave the poll open for a little bit longer. It's a tricky one. This is a tricky one. Yeah. So I'm going to take the poll out for right now. So right now you should see our screen. And let's see what we had a few. We had a few people not vote, but we had a few people on there, so I'm going to share it. It looks like most people thought it was D. D. D, okay. okay. Um, and let's hide it again. So what is the correct answer? So let's oh, how do I do it? Oh, I have to, I have to figure it out. So yeah. everybody thought D, so the answer looks like it was D. Yeah. So congratulations. All the group one, <laughs> our, our online group one. Um, so it looks like it's none of the above. And what does that say? So. so it says such claims, unless qualified, are likely to confuse consumers. So if a company does use these words, it needs to clearly explain in the ad why that is and the benefits should be significant. So the answer was D, none of the above. Yeah, so congratulations. So we're one down. We have four more to go. Yes, four more. <laughs> so let's go to next question. OK, so the next question is, should a business make this claim? You will lose at least 20 pounds in 10 days without diet or exercise. Hmm. hmm. So that's either yes or no. Mm -hmm. So think about that for a second. I'm going to launch another poll. Okay, think about it if you got your answer in your head. Okay, so on this poll, I'm launching it right now. A is true, B is false. Only use A and B. So A is true if you think it's yes, and B is no. So put in what you think it is. Again, you will lose at least 20 pounds in 10 days without diet or exercise. Should a business make that claim? One for A for yes, B for no. All right, a couple more seconds. All right. Looks like we have 100% on B. So let's see what it says. No. Yes. Yay. Yay. Okay. So yes. congratulations on that one. Outlandish claims like this are likely to be misleading. Mm -hmm. 74% got it right. That took the quiz. So that's good. Perfect. And on to next question. So you guys, so we're rocking it right now. So it looks like we have a 
two out of five. Yeah. So we're getting close to the A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So we talked about this a little bit already. Yeah, yeah Rebecca talked about this. You see an ad for Greek yogurt with an asterisk. When is an asterisk appropriate? Hmm. hmm. So we have A, if it explains the difference between Greek and regular yogurt. B, if it says the product is not really yogurt. C, if it says in tiny print that only limited qualities are available, and D, if it doesn't lead to any additional information. So think about your answer to that, A, B, C, or D, and I'm going to launch a poll again. So in which one of these situations would it be appropriate Either to use Either A, B, C, or D, yeah. So make your selection on what you thought it was. Yeah, this is, a <laughs> this is a tricky one. Yeah, Pearl was whispering it, but she's right. Yeah, it is, it is, it is a tricky one. So, looks like we have most. I'm going to close the poll in five seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Awesome. So, it looks like we have an answer. We have B and D selected, but we have the majority on A. So, Let's see what they did. Oh, oh congratulations. <laughs> yes. So an asterisk can add information that is necessary for the consumer, but cannot be used to contradict statements in ad, as Rebecca said earlier. Yeah, and that's a really great example of it, because explaining the difference between Greek and regular yogurt is just uh, giving additional information. It's not contradicting anything you said earlier. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Good information. Good stuff. All right. We're Three for three. So this is number four. We're getting close. Okay. So the next question is a local brewery sponsors a sweepstakes. When does this so-called sweepstakes turn into a lottery? So your choices are A, if they advertise the sweepstakes, B, if the brewery holds a cornhole competition, C, if the sweepstakes requires you to purchase beer, and D, if the grand prize includes two free drinks. Hmm. All right, we're going to launch another poll on this one. So get it in your head, A, B, C, or D. And we're launching that right now. So is it A, if they advertise a sweepstakes, B, if the brewer holds a cornhole competition, woohoo. C, if the sweepstakes requires you to purchase a beer, and I like a good beer, yes. And D, if the grand prize includes two free drinks. Ooh, I also like that. Free yeah. <laughs> I like the two free drinks over the one beer. So, yeah. Uh, and we're getting, we got some answers in, and I'm going to close it right about now. All right, so the majority on that one is we have two answers, two selections. One is A, but the majority chose D. D. If the grand prize includes two free drinks. Interesting. Okay. Well, All right, let's see. Well, that's one I might choose. So. <laughs> And the answer is actually, uh, oh, yeah. boo, we missed that one by a little bit. That was a tough one. Yes, it was. So sweepstakes, game of chance are all fun and games unless you have to pay to play. So if you do, they may be considered lotteries and violate various federal or state laws. Sponsoring games of skill, like a pitching um, horseshoe competition, should not be confused with sweepstakes, and entry fees generally can be required. Yeah. Yep. Good and this point. is why whenever you hear contests on the radio, or on TV, you always hear at the very end, no purchase necessary. Yeah. And that's because they, all, they really want to make sure that it's a sweepstakes, not a lottery, because lotteries have a lot more uh, regulations you have to comply with. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more difficult to execute. It's like that Micro Machines guy when he used to talk really, really fast and blah, 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 through everything. You hear that on the bottom of ads. So that's also something to kind of keep an eye out for. There's a lot of restrictions on advertising when it comes to when they have contests and rules. You'll hear them like in like five seconds spout off like, in a complete book, it sounds like, and you're like, what the heck did they say? So before entering anything, you always want to read the rules before entering. So make sure you do read the fine print. You obviously can't listen to it, but you could probably go online and find details about it also. So that's just a good point, too, is like those are there for a reason, so you might want to check, double check those afterwards instead of just entering. So let's go into our last question. One more. Right, well, last one. While looking to purchase a new face wash, you see the words all natural on the top of a lot of the products. In advertising and packaging, when can all natural be used? So your options are A, if your product comes directly from the earth, B, if there are no artificial ingredients in the product, or C, it can only be used if the FDA reviews your product first. 
All right, so get that in your head. A, B, or C. And I'm going to launch a poll. One, our last poll right here. We'll make it a good one. So A, if your product comes directly from the earth. B, if you are, if there are no artificial ingredients. And C, it can only be used if the FDA reviews your product first. So I'll leave this open for about five more seconds. Four, get your answers in. Three, two, and one. Not as many answers on that one. The only ones we have are on C. On C. Okay. Well, let's see. Oh, no, no. Oh, they came in last minute. So, but we still have most of them in C. Okay. So, <laughs> C is our sorry answer. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, C is the right <laughs> answer. So, let's see what C says. Um, oh, dang it. We did have, we did have a response on B, though, too. Yes. So both the FTC and FDA have stated that food and personal care products may not contain any artificial or synthetic ingredients if the advertisement or packaging claims the product is all natural. And that's something awesome. that's really important to keep in mind. Um, it's kind of a, a trend right now that consumers are really looking for all nat products they use all natural or organic or more eco-friendly. Um, and a lot of businesses and products do use the all natural label. So if you're using that, you want to make sure that you're using that correctly. Good point. All right. So three out of five, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Technically, I guess a D, but it's it's a hard quiz. No, no that's like a, that's not that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah it's like a, well, out of five, yeah. In grade since grade school, that would still be considered somewhat passing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. We're clicking back through here to get to the very end of our presentation today. So great job on the at truth. So it looks like we have some social media discussion now. Oh, yes. And of course, we always like to plug our social media platforms. Uh, so follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat, and YouTube. So we're all over. And if you're a business, we really encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn. We will share things related to advertising, related to bad ads, and a lot of really good business tips and uh, notifications. So for example, uh, so you can find out about webinars like these. So it's always a good place to keep in touch. Yes. Okay. And that is our contact information. So if you have ever want to contact us in the future, if you have any questions, if you have any ideas, suggestions for anything, feel free to shoot Pearl or I an email or a phone call. Good. And if you all have any questions right now, make sure to uh, get them in. It looks like we don't have any so far. Uh, but if you do have any questions to get in, uh, just go ahead and get them in the last couple of minutes here. Um, but no, that was that was great. And the quiz, the Add Truth website, is a good resource, not just for the quizzes and also the videos, but you can also report advertising, false or misleading advertising, also on that page. So when you go back, and I'll go back to that page a little bit, um, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, if you kind of go back to that site, there we go. Um, if you go back to the Add Truth website, you can see where you can report one also. So you can actually file a complaint and report to misleading ad also in this little module too. Uh, so it'll have you upload the uh, a version of it if you have like a PDF of the ad and you can explain where you saw it. So that's a good resource. And then um, there's additional research information in here as well. So this is a good resource. Um, also, in our main homepage, oh, and then the lessons of bad advertising. Bad, I can't say that. Bad advertising. Bad advertising. So, a lot of different kind of um, infographics that may be helpful to you as well. But um, if you go back to the homepage of Better Business Bureau, you'll also notice that um, there's a section on code of advertising. I'm trying to find where it is on this page. Uh, I'm going to find it on here. So let me see. Oh, this is our old page, and this is going to be our new page, if we can get it typed in correctly. Okay, so our new page. And then if you go under, oh, everything kind of changed around a little bit. Code of advertising. So I have to find that in our new section. 
Yeah, so they, a couple of things that moved around because we actually have a new website now, which is great, a new redesigned website. But there is a code of advertising uh, on our page that we'll be able to direct you to as well, um, which will be helpful too for, uh, for you. So uh, we can send that link. We have it, but we can send that link to everybody if you're interested in that also. So feel free to contact Pearl and we'll send you the link to our code of advertising as well. Um, go ahead. Uh, and as we mentioned, uh, we are here to help you make sure that your ads are transparent. So if you have any questions about your advertising, if you're not sure if an ad you have planned is breaking any rules, you can always go ahead and contact us. If you're an accredited business, reach out to your account manager and they'll be able to put you in touch with the right people. But, you know, we, we're not here to, you know, punish you. We're you're here to help you. So if you do have any questions, you know, we're always a good resource. Good point. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. Well, uh, it looks like there's no questions that have come in today. So we're going to wrap up the webinar for today. Um, we are not going to be having one in December. We'll give away the holiday break, uh, all of our great businesses. So happy holidays. It's coming up. Good luck with shopping. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm already sweating a little bit. And I'm like, shopping season. Gosh. Yay. Um, and then uh, we will relaunch the new BB Skill Builder series in January. So we'll have, uh, and we'll, we'll prepare with having um, uh, a schedule of what we're going to be having for the entire year so that you all can prepare for your webinars and prepare for your educational sessions each time. And we're recording these as well. And we're hosting them on our YouTube page. So if you're interested in seeing a library of our additional ones we've done in the past, we'll be happy to send that to you as well. Uh, just feel free to contact Pearl or Rebecca and they'll be happy to send you the link to those and then uh, the invitation to the next one in January. So again, thank you, Pearl, Rebecca, great job. Thank you again for putting together the great presentation and giving it to everybody today. And the quiz was great, so, and the videos, so fantastic. Uh, so thank you all for attending today, and have a fantastic rest of the week, and happy almost weekend. Happy holidays. Okay. See you next year. Yeah. <laughs>